All right, so a uh, quicker video, um, more concise, just to the point, to the argument. So for the V quacker guy at Wikipedia, whatever the other idiot's names are, um, the ones defending the one half m b squared. So the thing in <coughs> the thing in dispute is one half m v squared, and the idea that work or energy equals force times distance. Okay, absolute not smart arguments. <laughs> okay, so the simple argument is this falling argument. All right, and the same would go for going up against gravity. Okay. And so it's always, you know, it's already a well-established, well, lots of people <laughs> figured this part out, um, that yes, to go twice the velocity, you have to go four times as high uh, if you want to land with twice the velocity. And likewise, if you have twice the velocity at liftoff, you go four times as high. Now, you know, I think this, the simple argument, the irrefutable logic is, is that this experiment, okay, one unit of height dropping something, it hits the ground at 9.8, that's all it gets, and it travels 4.9. Now, those are the established facts. And that, you can understand, going a few feet up isn't going to change anything. It's still 9.8 meters per second. So the same exact thing that happens here, happens here. These two things will be exactly the same. So you'll be going 9.8 here, and you'll have traveled 4.9. Now, it's an absolute fact that if right there I stop gravity, so there's no gravity. I stop gravity right there. Okay, no more gravity is happening. It's not going to get any more from gravity because I killed whatever the gravitational force is. I have some capacity to do that. You absolutely know that it's going to travel, okay, because it's going 9.8. It already has the velocity that it's going to travel this distance without any need for any more force to affect it. Without any more force hitting it, it's going to do this distance. All right, this is, this is for free, essentially. You've already acquired the force here. So at this point, when this thing hits the ground here, it acquired the force that would give it the capacity to keep going. It would have gone to 4.9 units of distance in another second if it had been given the time. This is one second, by the way. This is one second. And so we know in the next second, this is how far it would go. And we know that, well, what's happening in the next second if gravity still happens? Well, if gravity is still happening, then obviously it's going to do what it did here. It's going to do the same thing. So it's going to gain another 9.8. So it would be 9.8 plus 9.8. Okay, so let me just write the total instead. So it's going to be 19.6. It's going to land. That's twice the velocity, exactly as you would expect. Um, and it's twice the time. This whole thing... This whole thing will be one second. And the only difference between gravity being on and gravity being off is this. This 4.9. That's all there's going to be. 4.9, 4.9. Two units of 4.9. That's all that it gets. It doesn't get four units of 4.9. It gets two from gravity. Two added ones. All right? It's, and this is the Galileo 1357 thing. But, I mean, it's... it's, all, it's logically impossible for you to believe it got force here and it got force here and it got four units of force it's only two units of time it's only two units of force the velocity here would be faster if it got a force here and it got a force here it obviously didn't do that it only got one 9.8 in one second i mean the logic is impossible to evade and be honest Okay, you really can't be an honest person and evade that logic. I guess just for clarity, I should just point out the opposite is true, right? With twice the velocity, you'll understand that you're, you'll go four times as high, but you'll only take two seconds. Two seconds, okay? The launch speed would be two seconds. You can't get to this point any other way. You have to give it this 2x velocity that will create the 4x the distance in exactly twice the time. And you'll go half your speed right here. You'll go this whole distance, okay? And here is where you go half your speed. And then you'll finish off the last of your energy. So here, there's obviously only one unit of force opposing you because you only lose one unit of velocity. You only lose one of the velocities 
traveling this whole distance because you're going through the gravity quickly. So it's really completely applicable to the paint spray argument that all you're really saying is, is how fast did you go through the paint spray? Not how far you traveled. How far you traveled isn't going to tell you how much paint's going to hit you. It's how fast you went through that distance. How fast did you travel the distance decides how much force you opposed. So the slower you go, the more work you do, which is quite obvious and quite intuitive and quite connected to everything we personally experience. The slower I lift something, the more work I will do, the quicker I can get it to the point. The jerk for weightlifters, the faster I can jerk it, the less energy I'll have to apply. I mean, okay. anyway, it's too silly. All right, the second argument regarding rolling uh, friction. Now, the guys overtly claim that rolling friction is constant for distance. That's exactly the same per foot. Okay, now the argument is, of course, no, it isn't. So I roll two things, one with one velocity, one with two velocities. Okay, uh, I wrote 12, but whatever, 2v, 1v. Um, <clears throat> so what can you logically deduce? The friction is what's going to consume the energy. So you give it a, an impulse, it rolls, and what's going to happen is it's going to lose its velocity. And the uh, argument is it's going to lose it by Galilean rules. Frankly, it's going to be 1, 3 again. It's going to go half the speed here. Okay, that's where it's going to be going half its velocity. is way down here in the track. Anyway, so this is going to duplicate this. We know there's some point where this is going 1v, and we know what 1v looks like. 1v will look like this. So when it's going one velocity, it's going to do this much distance. So we know this is where one velocity is. We know that's where it's going to be going one velocity, okay? So it starts off at two. It does this whole distance, and what's the, the truth again? This will be one unit of time. Okay, the same time to do this whole distance as it will take for, for to do this whole distance. So these two times will be exactly the same. Obviously, it's going the high velocity here. It's giving away less to friction. As it slows down, it gives more and more and more and more and more to friction. So the friction curve is completely, you know, like this direction. The slower you're going, so, you know, I don't know, the arrow's pointing this way. It doesn't matter. The idea is more friction the slower you're going the more velocity you have the less friction there is something like that i don't know whatever um and um and it's a logical proof again you can't deny it we know exactly what one velocity looks like it looks like this so it has to be here so you're going half your speed three quarters of the way down the track how can you possibly think that the this is a unit of uh, energy. This is a unit of energy. This is a unit of energy, and this is a unit of energy, and they're all equal. There is not four units of energy here. There's only two. There's only twice the velocity. Okay, you only took twice the time in the gravity. I mean, it's just kind of obvious that that's the, how the force is extracted based on time. Two seconds to go four times the distance. Uh, so it's exactly like the falling argument because gravity is deciding it's creating the friction. Without the gravity, there won't be any friction and you won't be losing any energy. And you're just saying how fast you're moving, okay? How, how, how much time you're hit with a certain weight of gravity. There'll be one unit, one second's worth of 9.8 of pressure through this whole distance here and only one unit of 9.8 pressure applied. This little tiny distance is just one unit of 9.8. It's just one unit of 9.8 of pressure placed on the object. It's clearly a time-dependent force. I don't, there's no, you can't counter this argument, okay? It's irrefutable logic. We know what one velocity looks like. It can only look like this with the same mass, the same circumstance. It has to look like this. We know this is where it's going half the speed. And we know it's 9.8 per one second here, 9.8 per one second here. That's all that took place. There is no four units of energy. There's no four units of work.
irrefutable. It can't be honestly and logically refuted. It's indisputable fact. And you're arrogantly, obnoxiously saying with no evidence that you can supply, you're telling me I have to believe something else or I'm a fool or an idiot. No, I'm not. You're the one who's been fooled. You're the one talking shit. All right, Leibnizian shit. I mean, I could give you the history for fucks. So you go look up Leibniz. Go look up this visa. Go look up the living force and see how, oh, they had an argument for a hundred years and nobody had any evidence? <laughs> Gee, that's really lame. Okay. Guy, yeah, well, whatever. Fuck you and such. Blah, 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 blah.